Dewey's little cousin Benji. He's, he's ready to be settled in for our drive today. We are in, what do you call this place? It's the Los Banos, B-A-N-O-S, Banos, Banos? Los Banos exit at the TA on I-5 in California. We're just south of Patterson, uh, California. And we're trying to make it to Rice Hill, Oregon today. And then deliver tomorrow. So, Benji has taken his victory lap this morning. He was victorious, did all he needed to do. Um, yeah, what, the, what is the dash? The dash says it's 68 degrees. Oh, the ball and chain is sending me messages. No, this is Leonard. The other ball and chain. Let me throw these in the back. Put these on so I can read. Washington and Oregon roads are clean and wet. Pass is clear. I-84, clean and wet. Five south into California, weed area expecting light snow and freezing temps for the next three days. Be ready. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be. Montana I-90 clean and wet. Wyoming I-80 clean. No heavy wind warnings. Colorado I-70 and I-25 are clean. Colder temps and higher elevations at night. I-80 over Donner Pass expecting snow and temps below freezing over this weekend. Be safe all. See what is in front of you. Yeah, whatever, Leonard. Oh, I need to get my hair ties on you because we are on I-5. <laughs> I don't want you guys to fall and hurt your head because if any of you are like Stephanie, you're not wearing your hard hats. And you're not wearing your seatbelts. Good morning, good morning, Marion and Paula. Just getting you guys settled in here can't see the boy he's he's ready he is ready for a drive I did my pre-trip I just have to document it here in a minute what are you guys doing yes I do Marion absolutely I would like you to drive I have a lot of crocheting to do and I haven't crocheted since Monday night Ugh, time for some dry shampoo on this old greasy trucker head. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Marion's going to drive this morning so that I can work on those squares that I haven't worked on since Monday night or Tuesday night, whenever I went live, whenever that, I think it was Tuesday night. I don't remember. I know. I know. This truck driving thing is really interfering with everything I need to do. No lights again yesterday. I lost my lights. So, electricity's out. Good morning, Terry. Thank you, thank you. Marion's going to drive for us this morning so we can sit and crochet in the back and make noise and distract her. Well, we'll help her work on her concentration strengths <laughs> co-driver is ready to roll he had his victory walk this morning I have sunlight sunrise in my eyes all because of the snowstorm so what do you have tidied up my area next to me last night nice let's keep it that way so Paula, <laughs> if there's snow, um, Paula, do you have another source of heat? What are you doing to stay warm? Are you layering? Are you burning a wood stove? What are you doing? <laughs> well, at least you're being productive. All I'm doing is picking up and delivering loads. 
I wish you'd hurry up and win the lottery so I didn't have to do this anymore. A generator. Oh, Paula, aren't they wonderful? Now, I don't know what kind you have. Even a little one is something, right? To keep a space heater, to keep some things running. Um, my mom has a big one out behind the shed that's hardwired to the house. So, during one of the many power outages during the year, my mom doesn't know until she goes to turn on the stove. Because the stove won't work when it's running on the generator. But the refrigerator, oh good. Yes, they are wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy you have a generator. Um, my mom is having a wonderful experience with this big, big old diesel generator out back. Like I said, it's hardwired in. I believe that it, the lines go underground to the house. I don't even know where they're connected. All I know is that she has heat. She has a refrigerator. You have two? Nice. Generators are a nice thing, you guys. Because what if Paula was sitting there in a snowstorm without electricity? and without a wood stove or some other form of heat there are gas okay so you use unleaded in yours right um mom's is a diesel generator um either way whatever they are as long as you have them what a wonderful thing to have it's kind of nice out today it's kind of nice out i i would rather just sit back let Marion drive, crochet, give a whole lot of belly rubs in the back. Speaking of Mr. in the back, we are going to give him, uh, is it a summer cut? Is that what you call it when they, they just get buzzed? Um, when he goes to the groomer because he has got a thick, full coat and um, longer even than Jack's. Okay. Marion's ready to roll. We are ready to roll. As soon as I um, document my pre-trip. Yeah, I'm just going to give him a buzz cut for the summer because um, that's what we used to do with Parker, um, the Corgi. Poor Parker. He was so special. Such a sweet dog. Sounds like a Kid Rock song. I ain't seen the sun in three damn days. <laughs> Blanket fell behind the can't, can't pull it up because the cat is sleeping on it. She is just interfering. Well, you know what though? Maybe she wants it there, Robin. Maybe she wants it there. And you just don't have any say in the matter. Okay, are we ready? Marion's ready. Marion's ready to drive. We're going to drive. That's right, Marion. See? And if she put that blanket there, then that means that's where she wants it. Hello. Okay. Seatbelts, everyone. Okay. Seatbelts, helmets, water wings, steel-toed boots. That's right. Marion's in charge. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I need my ear thing. My ears. I need to put my ears in because the ball and chain is going to call and say, why aren't you rolling yet? No, he won't say that. I roll when I'm ready to roll. And he, he's dispatchers who don't know that. <laughs> need to get a different job. <laughs> Okay, see, Paula, Paula is following the rules. I heard a bang last night. It made me sit up straight up in bed. I said a wordy dirt, jumped up here and looked, and there wasn't anybody or anything around me. I run a tight ship, no rule break. All right, let's let Stephanie know. <laughs> see if the, yep, trailer is attached. Did our tug test. We are rolling. We are in Marion's capable hands. Yeah, I, I don't know what time that was. 10, 11, 12, something. 4 p.m. I don't know. But <laughs> I jumped out of bed. I heard something. Um, I think 
it might have been like the lids of these garbage cans. The wind was so awful when we got here yesterday that, um, I mean, things were just blowing around. Hi, Trudy. Hello. Good evening. Um, there were things blowing around. I think something blew and hit the side of the truck because, man, I checked the truck all over this morning and there is nothing. Nothing's dead dented nothing's broken nothing was out of place everything was right where it's supposed to be i have a wheel chalk just a little black rubber wheel chalk that i turned upside down and put inside the uh, spare tire it's still there i also have four load locks attached to the back of the cab they're still there the um, fifth wheel is still um, locked into the kingpin on the trailer we're all good. It's all good, man. It's all good, man. Were any of you watching uh, Mikey do his Adobe Illustrator work with a, a crochet chart? It was fascinating. Um, I think he's live right now still. I don't know if he still is. I don't know. Uh, we went for our victory walk. Took our victory lap. I think this guy's going to back up or something. I'm going to let him. Yeah. Um, oh boy, I forgot the coffee. <sighs> My coffee pot is back there. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to turn right here and park because I forgot to fill up my coffee pot. Let's do this. Let's do this to fill up my coffee cup with my second cup of coffee. I'm going to park right here next to this purple truck. Sorry, Robin, I can't show it to you. But we're gonna, we're gonna go right here. I guess we're not ready. Sorry, Marion. I know Marion was ready to roll, but if my coffee pot, it's plugged in. If that thing falls over, we have a heck of a mass. And if it hits Benji, if that liquid hits Benji, then he'll get burned. So none of that, right? Yeah. I'm going to turn on the hazards so people can scream and swear at me for parking here. Well, it's coffee, people. It takes, it takes, it's a... Okay. Yeah, I forgot. Okay. No second coffee on mine. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do a second one of these. <laughs> I drink two of these. Isn't that a beautiful, like, salmon-y kind of red? <laughs> I got this for Christmas. This was super expensive. I got it for my brother and his wife. My brother and sister and the boys. Mm. Yeah, so anyway, Mikey was... Um, working with Adobe Illustrator and he has created all the crochet symbols himself this back on silver and so he has designed all the crochet symbols you know according to standard and he has um so he's on Adobe Illustrator and it's like a, a kind of a chevron kind of a ripple kind of blanket and he has like red lines outside of the pattern outside of the chart that show the right angles so he knows if he needs a space there or not to make the right angle with those stitches it was just fascinating and one gal she said it's like watching the bob ross of crochet because it was he's just kind of talking you know really soft and um He's putting a happy little popcorn stitch over here and a happy little bobble over there. Oh, it was just, it, it was really mesmerizing to watch. But I will listen to it later in the day to, um, let me, where if I can fix chat? No, no, that's not what I want to do. Eh, eh, eh. What's this do? What does that do? That's a share. That's a share. What is this? I think. Nope. What's that? Live chat. There we go. Okay. Okay. 
It was. It was like watching the Bob Ross of crochet just work. And oh, we were just giggling in the chat. That that was, there, it was another chatter who, who made that comparison and it was absolutely mesmerizing. Um, if you're into charts, um, gosh, I'm like, what is he using? That's not stitch fiddle, is it? Good morning, Diana. Did you see the short that I put up with for you a couple days ago? Um, anyway, um, I asked, you know, this doesn't look like stitch fiddle. And I think it was, it was one of his moderators, Wendy, who said, no, this is Adobe Illustrator. And she told me, you know, those symbols didn't come with the program that's he made all the symbols so he's got all those symbols that he made you know crochet chart symbols and he was making a beautiful pattern and it was interesting how he would take a whole section like a repeat and he'd he'd click on it and then he can see Trudy I love charts and then he would click on it and he would copy it and he would paste it to another part of the pattern so did you see the short? I didn't see the short, um, but it was fascinating. And it is something that I would like to sit and crochet and just watch him do. That was just, that was mesmerizing. Okay, I'm not gonna chug down that coffee so that I can fill it up. We'll pull over in a little while. We're not in a huge, we're, we're, we got time to get to um, Rice Hill. Yeah, but um, I'm gonna put this. It's got it's half, it's half full of coffee, and then when I pull over to to go for another victory walk, victory lap with the baby boy, then I'll I'll redo my coffee. And I've got water here. I've got everything I need. Okay, so let's. Okay, Marion, that was a false start. Just kidding. Oh, we're talking. I was talking about Ellen. Did you see Mikey live this morning? I don't know if he's still live or not, but he was working with Adobe Illustrator, and he had cre he has created all the crochet chart um, chart symbols, and he was creating a, a, a crochet pattern, a chart. And it was fascinating. And he was being compared to like the Bob Ross of crochet. <laughs> Cause he was just kind of, you know, talking low, talking to himself. It was fascinating. And I want to go back and watch the replay. Um, like when I'm sitting and crocheting. Okay, Marion, uh, we are actually ready to roll now. For reals this time, for reals. But I thought it was fascinating to watch him. He, and I even asked, you know, what program is he using? Is that Stitch Fiddle? And his moderator, Wendy, said no. Yes, on YouTube, yes. See if he's still live, because that was fascinating. And I would like to, like I said, I want to sit and crochet. I want to work on the Montana. And um, um, just watch and listen to him do that it was it was amazing yeah we're finally going good morning Gwen we're off okay yes on YouTube and I just thought it was fascinating to you know it wasn't stitch fiddle but um, I'm thinking how many squares are done um two <laughs> And the ends are not woven in because we, uh, you know, with all this talk about weaving in ends, the OGs of the knitting and crochet world say you do not weave in ends until after you've blocked. So, yeah, I've got two on the blocking board in the pegs. But I've got to get them done. You're right, Marion. Okay, have a little steak. Um, Robin's got all of hers done. Wait a minute. How do I get out of here? Yeah, I turn left. Okay. What's this guy doing? Oh, crap. Okay, I'm gonna get out to the chicken lane. Actually, I'm gonna get all the way over. Mmm, 
assume somebody's standing out there and I don't have anything. I can't give her anything. Dang it. Or him. I've given her water before if it's that same gal. Right at the stop sign. I don't think I've given any money because I hardly ever have cash on me. If I had cash on me, is that her? Or is that all? Oh, that's her. Morning. <laughs> you too. Those are my people. Anyway, it's fascinating. And if you want to be part of it while it's still live, if it's still live, you're not going to hurt my feelings. You people? <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm you people. Let's all be you people and, and answer a question. Let's see if we, if we know the answer. Or if we can fake it and see if uh, Robin knows the difference. Boy, that is one dirty windshield. Robin, why didn't you clean my windshield? Your people? Yeah. I, I want to I wanna hear the yarn question. I want to know if you can tell the difference between the truth and a lie when it comes to a yarn question. Oh, I know what this is all about. Okay. Oh, what is that? Do I have to go in? Nope, I got a green light. Yay! Um, okay, truth or a lie? I want to try that big, fat, like, arm knitting um, yarn that they have at Walmart. Or at least they used to have it at Walmart. Truth or a lie? <laughs> I am, Amy. I am headed your way. Oh, ice yarn. Picasso. Okay, so... Lie. Yes, you're right. You know me too well. You caught me in a lie. Um, so, Robin, you should go look up the fibers of Picasso and see what you can come close to. <laughs> You're all calling me a liar. I am hurt. I am hurt. <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> Oh, you guys, yeah, so Robin can go to the ice yarn site and look up those yarns that you're talking about and she can convert them to similar yarns. Did you say specifically ice yarn, Robin, or just yarn? Oh, it's a frog. I've never, I don't have I tried it? Do I have some? Seems like I'm... I don't remember. I don't think I've tried it. Liar, liar. Yeah. You guys are teasing me and hurting my feelings of calling me names. <laughs> Robin, did you say I yarn specifically or did you just say yarn? Did I miss that because I... I can't see a thing. Yep, can't see a thing. Oh, maybe. Yes, I shine. Oh, um, the natural cotton. Um, anything like I saw a yarn. Oh, okay. I saw a yarn. In a yarn snob review yesterday, that was cotton and silk. 
And I wondered if ice yarn has an equivalent. Because, I mean, cotton and silk, wouldn't that make a great top? Oh my goodness. Good morning, Pat. Benji says good morning from his position of authority in the back. <laughs> I've got a smeary, nasty windshield. When I get to Lodi, now if you could look up and see if there's like a cotton silk blend like was on that. Um, well, a Amy, I'm pretty sure she was reviewing hobby yarns. Like a series of hobby yarns. Yeah, she had bought like a bunch of hobby yarns and it was, um, I was really interested in that cotton and silk. Of course, I have all these lofty goals. All right, I see a yarn like that and I think, oh. If I was, you know, further along in my sweater education, like tops, I would like to make a top out of that with um, a really short ribbing at the top, but I don't like a low cut. I don't like a wide, you know, wide from my neck and low in the front. I don't like that. And I don't like it tight, but I like it, you know, right about collarbone right at the collarbone and a little like inch and a half two inch ribbing with a pretty texture for the top itself well fitting sleeves that go down about like half sleeves with the same little ribbing at the at the cuff and at the bottom of the shirt So I'm not that far along in, you know, my designer journey. Why do I have my crew set at 70? To, at 70? Are you looking to lose your job, Dana? <laughs> I'm not ready to lose my job. <laughs> I, I really like it. Is Benji a corgi? I have two rescue cor... Okay, so I think... Uh, yeah, oops. <laughs> I already got caught doing that in California. I'm not going to do it again. Thankfully, the radar... Okay, before I go into Benji's breed. Thankfully, there's a radar in front of my truck that tells me how many feet ahead of me that truck ahead of me is, which is 325 feet. And it keeps going up because he is... And then I can, I can hit a switch and I can... Okay, he's doing 60. So, okay, 328 feet. He's doing 60 and I'm close enough that my radar slowed down my engine to 59 so that I don't get too close and it, it's holding me at 328 feet so that's what my radar does and you know you don't rely on that to keep you from tailgating but it's good information and you learn how to work with a bossy um, it is a cool gadget it is very cool um, Okay, now, as far as Benji being a corgi, because of his coat, the coloring of his coat, you know, that two-tone, it looks like a Pembroke Welsh corgi, and because it is, like, it is, he is a long-haired dog. There's no doubt about it. He has a corgi coat. No doubt about it. But he has a short back. And longer, you know, he has legs that are like two to three times longer than a corgi's. And looking at his face the other day, I thought I saw Chihuahua. 
So my guess, before we do the DNA testing, Robin, hint, hint. Um, Robin's supposed to get me in touch with someone for a good price on DNA, a DNA testing kit. So, and I'm waiting, I am waiting. So we are going to be guessing. I want to hear from everybody what you think. Now there are freckles. Hi, Samantha. Yeah. Put it on your short list of 50 million things to do today. Um, we are going to be doing a guessing game. I don't know that there's going to be any prizes, but let you know everybody keeps re keep repeating what your guesses are. Now there are also matching like freckles in the white part of his coat, the freckles that are the same color as the reddish tan part of his coat. So, and like Angela suggested yesterday, Britneys and Spaniels, they have freckles like that. So do Australian cattle dogs, which are different from an Australian Shepherd. I always have to reiterate that because so many people get the two confused. Do you win a Benji? Um, I'm sorry, but Benji is taken. He's my boy and he's not going anywhere. You lose. I mean, like, do you ever offer up Topaz? Hello? <laughs> like, I do not like think uh, your brain will hurt. Okay. Um, okay. But, you know, I'm posting pictures of him quite a bit, especially on Facebook. And you saw him as the thumbnail. Long hair dachshund, dachshund. But he's, yeah, I don't see it because he doesn't have the long back. He has a short, normal back like a normal dog and he has long legs. But you think there might be some of that in there? Okay, Marion, mental note. Marion's thinking dachshund, long haired. Okay. What else? Anybody else have a different guess than the Chihuahua Corgi mix? I mean, the freckles kind of throw me off like there, you know, there's obviously more than just two dogs in there, right? But I'm thinking predominantly Chihuahua and Corgi. Does not have short legs. Legs. He's pretty well proportioned. It's not like, you know, somebody threw dog parts at a wall and just saw what would stick. American Heinz 57. I think you're right. <laughs> but I am, my guess is that um, his two main ones are going to be Corgi and Chihuahua. And if there is cattle dog in there, he doesn't have that intensity, that, that thing that um, healers have. He's definitely not a one person dog. He is friendly to everybody. Um, Dana truck driver breed, that's right. Hi, Kathy. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. We're guessing what kind of breeds um, Benji is. And everyone says Corgi. And the first time I sent a picture to Robin, she's got a thing on her phone. No, he has long legs, Marion. He does not have short legs. He has long legs. So Robin has it, maybe it's an Apple phone thing because I have a Android. Um, my Android won't do this, but her phone, like I sent her a picture of his face and her phone, if you hit a button on the, when you bring up the picture, will search for the dog breed and it came up with Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Collie, maybe.
scratch dachshund. Okay, yeah, maybe, you know, a little Sheltie, Collie, something like that. Definitely not in the face, but maybe in the body or the coat. Could be. Hi, Denise. Does Benji bark a lot? No. Um, I think um, it seems like when we lived... Um, does Benji bark a lot uh, to herd you? No, he does not act like a herding dog. Okay, so Robin just sent a picture of her dachshund corgi mix. Really with it? Yeah, you know, and I can see Collie or, you know, Sheltie with his coat. Um, let me see, Robin, if I can see that. Hmm, interesting. I'll share that picture next time we're live, um, Robin, because that, there's some there's some similarities there especially in the coat was he i i couldn't look too much because i'm driving did did your um dachshund corgi mix have a long back and short legs Whew, i am struggling here i i might have to take a little break Or did he have like a short back and longer legs like um, Benji does? The coat. Yes, the coat is very much similar. Now, yours didn't have the like the saddle pattern. not mine internet oh okay okay it's not yours it's from the internet yeah i see similarities with that and the next time we go live we'll um i'll try to remember to share that picture because that is interesting but i wasn't able to tell if that dog had a long back and short legs or not you'll have to tell me mm -mm 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 Hi, Tracy. Long time no see. That's right. Oh, now Niles, Niles is, is helping you out there a little bit. Nightbot. That's what he does. He'll, he'll say it right in front of everybody. For those of you who don't know, if you type in the letters RPS, he will play uh, he will play rock paper scissors with you. Oh, <sighs> welcome to the San Andreas Fault, everybody. Oh, yeah. So I think you know, Robin, you might be onto something. Yeah, we got Texas, we got the UK, we got Spokane, Washington, we've got New York in the house. He cheats, he does cheat, and he's a poor, he's a really bad loser. And his name is Niles, <laughs> Nightbot. Niles Nightbot. Okay, container truck. I am gonna try to go around you. <sighs> Dropping. Hi, Sherry. Oklahoma. South Carolina, that's right. I'm from all over, of course. Today, I'm from California, unfortunately. Tomorrow, I'll be from Oregon. Hopefully, the next day, I'll be from Idaho. <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> oh, it was so nice to be in Idaho. It was nice to be home, to see my people at church on Sunday morning, and to have Easter an Easter meal with my friend Pat's family, who, you know, was having their first Easter meal without her now that she's gone. 
and to pick up Benji from them. Yes. <laughs> We'll be waving at Amy. Well, we won't be waving at Amy because I'm going to end the live in Lodi before we get to Sacramento. <laughs> okay, dude, I'm going around you. I'm going around you. I'd like to at least do 60 today, even though trucks are only supposed to do 55. So, Tracy, what have you been up to? Did you catch that live by Mikey this morning? Now, I am not... You know, when it comes to Bag of Day and Mikey and all those big ones, I, I'm not like a super fan. But I do, I did really enjoy um, watching him work with Adobe Illustrator and those crochet symbols and creating a chart and the copying and pasting of repeats. And it was just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. I'm definitely going to be watching that replay when I have enough downtime to just kind of listen and work on the Montana, you know, something or the squares, the squares for the spring square swap. I suppose I have to get those done this month <laughs> so that they're mailed out sometime during the week of the 22nd this month. So I'm not late so that I'm not the one who's late. Oh, in fact, Tracy, if you're interested, I'll send you the rules for the spring square swap. We only did it in the U.S. for this swap. The, the ornament swap we did worldwide, but we only did it in the U.S. Uh, if you're interested, email me and I'll email you a copy of, you know, our guidelines. And if you want to do something like that overseas, you know, in your area, take it and run with it. I, I meant to get the Canadians involved too, but I didn't. Your squares are still on the skein. Yes, they are. Who said that yesterday, Robin? That That's cool. That's a cute little phrase. My squares are still on the skein. I can't remember who said that, but it was really clever. Except for two. I got two that are on the pegboard. Kim? I think it was one of the Kims. Yes. I think it was. Well, I'll have to go back and watch the replay. And see, that, that was so cute. I think it was Kim, Ellen. I think you guys are right. Ah, it was just... That was clever. But we have until May 1st to get them mailed out. And, you know, I never did get, you know, with the Canadians to see if they wanted to do a group or or anybody in the UK or South Africa. You are such an overachiever, show off. <coughs> rub it in my face, why don't you? Just rub my nose in it. Oh boy, I think I do need a little trucker break. When I'm done with this cup of coffee, I'll get a trucker break, a quick one, so that I can refresh my coffee and Canada's shipping is horrible, even between provinces. Yeah, so if they, you know, they would have to be aware of that if they were to, you know, the ones that wanted to do it. They could do their own version of it. They don't need my help. But I thought it'd be cool if people like, you know, our South Africans, our people in the UK, and blocking 12 washcloths at the moment. 12 more to go. Very nice, Ellen. I just wanted to beat you. Of course you did. And boy, did you beat me handily. Holy cow. I figured you'd be last minute like me. I thought I had all the time in the world. Oh, we've got two, three months to do this. Blah, blah, blah. Robin won't beat me. Oh yeah, she did. Well, they're not mailed yet, girl. <clears throat> they are not in the mail yet. I mean, this isn't over, Missy. <laughs> I think your square choice was wonderful.
And, you know, group two may not get filled up, which is fine. I need to email them and let them know, here's what you have in group two. In fact, I'm just going to call it, you know, at five people. You're going to have seven of your own squares and you're going to have five of the others whatever no pressure here I, la 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 i can't hear you i'm going through a tunnel so group two will just mail out five squares and then use the rest of their own squares to complete the blanket Who is that? Who is that? Cricket! Hi, Cricket! Oh, Niles hugged you when you came in. I think it will be cool, too. I think it'll look just fine. Then you can take those five ones and just put them, you could put them in a diagonal, you can put them in a line in the center, um, you can make a like a cross in the middle, you can do whatever. You can put them in the four corners. I think it would look really awesome with just five of other people's squares and seven of your own. Ugh. Man, I got all kinds of, you know, different patterns going in my head right now. You can even get fancy and turn all those squares on their points, kind of do them, do them, you know, on a bias. You know what I mean? You can you can turn you can make them rather than squares. I mean you can get fancy. I challenge somebody to do that when they get their when they have all twelve of their squares. Instead of making them squares, you know, in in normal you know, strips of squares, blocks on your um, afghan, turn them and and join them like diamonds, you know, on the on the points. That would be cool. I'm gonna lay mine out and see how much that changes the dimensions and see which way I wanna go, you know, vertical or horizontal like that. Yeah, I'm going to at least lay them out and look at it and put that in the um, video that they could do it like that. Ha ah, la la la. I had Pat Benatar in my head this morning when I got up. We belong together. Whoa! We belong. We belong. We belong together. And I'm a slacker. I do expect to see a finished product there, Robin. That's what I'll beat you at is getting the finished blanket done. <laughs> Famous last words. I'm not the one. Well, I'm the one who's driving truck, and I'm making big promises. <laughs> we belong together. <laughs> Finished product. Finished piece. These are going to be beautiful blankets. Very fantastic. Very. I almost want to say that. I think this is fun, and I think I want to do it again next year. Next year, I want to do everybody else's like communities and you know collaborations and 
crochet alongs. Stop doing my own. Now I want to do the um, ugly Christmas sweater cow. <laughs> you're, you're joining, Missy. You are joining in. I want to do the ugly Christmas sweater cow. And for those of you who don't know, that starts May 1st. More info to come. And it's not mine. Doesn't have anything to do with me or Robin or the Rad Girls. Does it? I don't know. I need to hear more about that because I've already forgotten most of our conversation. Oh, it's not a shawl, Robin. I'm sorry, but it is a shawl. It's a wrap. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a wrap. I don't know. You know, that's just... That's just... Okay, so what does everybody else think? Okay, because that's just, you know, me. That That is not like an industry standard that I'm shouting. Um, I have no idea how Darla sweater. Is anyone going to do the cow from Bag of Day? That, I, I don't do Bag of Day patterns. Love, I love Crystal, don't get me wrong. I just... But that shawl, we were talking about that shawl yesterday. Okay. Before we get into that, uh, let's take a vote here on um, shawls versus wraps. To me, a wrap is a rectangle, and a shawl is a triangle or it's asymmetrical. That's just my mind. That's just my classification. Totally personal. What about all of you? Um, Robin obviously wants to call it a shawl. It's her pattern. She can call it whatever she wants and I can but I can give her give her heck about it all day long are you doing it Marion I love that you're doing it um, but we're gonna talk about that here in a second I haven't really seen it same you're the same Ellen okay yeah t that's just I don't know why that is that's just and it's totally a personal emotional thing I thought about it, but for one thing, I have nowhere to block anything that large. So, Amy, you know, I saw a video of Mikey's once talking, you know, about these two again. I think a wrap is rectangle. Okay. Since I do shells all the time, I agree on the definition. Oh, the one that Robin gave that it is a shawl slash wrap. So, there's one for you, Robin. But seriously, folks, <laughs> it's her it's her crochet along. She can do whatever the heck she wants. She can she can call it a baby booty. <laughs> Sent you a pic. Oh uh, I am correct. Okay, well she's gotta be right. So I was wrong and you were right. I haven't looked at the pic. I'm I'm trying to keep it together to the next rest area. And who is it who says you're correct? That's that's what I want to know. Oh, that that doesn't help me any. You sent it in a text. I won't be able to see that for a while, till after the live. You think it's regional? Okay, maybe it is. I think I got it from YouTube. You know, I'm YouTube educated. <laughs> I don't block my shawls except crystals will be a one time. Okay, so back to what I was saying about Mikey and blocking. Um, I saw a video of his a handful of years ago where he just took a little portable hand steamer and he hung something up, you know, and just steamed one side and steamed the other and it was done and it was beautiful. Um, and those hand steamers and this was, well, I want to say three or four years ago, I walked into Bymart, which is a local store here, 
a knit yes they're doing both a knit and crochet crochet along okay so i walked into buy mart which is a local store in the northwest member owned kind of thing did you get it from youtube okay okay marion yeah he just and those little hand steamers like i think i paid 30 bucks for it at the maybe less than that at um buy mart now it's going to be more than that today because even three or four years ago prices were much lower everywhere oh i got a i got a phone call Can you hear me now? <laughs> that was the ball and chain, Colin. Okay, so anyway, what was it? Mikey steaming, Mikey steaming a shawl. Duh, how many times did I have to tell you guys that I was on the phone making the little phone thingy with my hand? Yeah, pay attention, Robin, try to keep up. Okay. Like everybody else knew. 
Okay, now we're at the split here. I'm gonna head towards Stockton and Sacramento. I forget what else would I... Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, wait, 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 okay, wait. <laughs> okay, now we're headed towards Sacramento. Actually, we're headed to Lodi. And it was you? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <sighs> yeah, so those little hand steamers at Bymart, they were like 20, 30 bucks back in the day. I think I just bought one at Bymart that was like 40, 50 bucks, but still totally worth it. You could probably order a cheap one off of Amazon. I bet Robin could find a link. Oh, maybe she couldn't. Not unless you got your your Amazon Associates thing fixed. Because otherwise it'll be a three-page link. But what I did with your link, Robin, was I took that big link and I and I and I went to a URL shortener and and made a shorter link for those envelopes. That's how I did it but you don't have to do that. What are you working on right now? You cleaned out your spot last night, so you didn't crochet. Are you crocheting this morning? Oh, oh, San Andreas fault. Yeah, so anyway, um, Crystal, oh, that's what we were gonna talk about. Robin and I talked a lot about this yesterday. Crystals, you got your... Um, talking about tickled that she's doing something a pattern I want to say of this caliber of this um, skill and experience level we are tickled because um, you know like I don't do a lot of her patterns because she does stick to a certain you know level one level two kind of you know wheelhouse because that's who her people are right and um, I always wanted something a little more level three from her because I knew she was capable. In fact, I told her once, you are more than capable of sharing with, you know, designing and sharing with us a level three pattern. Um, and when she saw it, this was years ago, um, she saw this in a live and she's like, yeah, I'd like to do that. And that's all she said. And uh, I think that's what she said. You know, I've, I've blinked since then. But um, so I don't follow Crystal. I don't, you know, she has a, she has a wonderful, super loyal fan base. And we were talking about this yesterday that yes, you know, those people expect those level one and two patterns from her. But if she, you know, she needs to, you know, soothe her own create. She needs to scratch her own creative itch, and um, you know, do something that's more level three. And here she is with this shawl. And I know I've seen little, you know, snippets of it as I've been scrolling. I haven't stopped to really look at it, but it is, it is. It tickles me that she is finally doing something like this. I don't think she's people. People are going to get mad at her or anything like that. I know, you know, she doesn't want to upset anybody because that's her nature. But, you know, at the same time, she's got to scratch her own creative itch. I think it's lovely that she's doing this shawl. And she can always do more of the level one and two stuff. That is, you know, where a lot of people come to her and a lot of people come in to crochet for that, for her level one and two stuff. Wonderful stuff. And we were saying, you know, we were talking yesterday about that chicken, that decorative pot holder, that chicken. I did that years ago and I didn't even realize who Bag of Day was. <laughs> Yeah, I know that she has actual pattern writers, and my gut feeling is that she comes up, she's the creative 
portion of that, she comes up with the idea for the design and she can whip it out on a hook, but she doesn't sit down and write patterns is what I understand. She has what, what I, I thought I heard plural, pattern writers that she has, that she uses. And it's still her creativity. She doesn't just say, hey, throw me a pattern for a shawl. I don't believe she does that. No, she is super creative. Correct? Yes. I, I, I think she is the one. These are her ideas. This is her intellectual property. Even if she's not comfortable with, you know, actually sitting down and writing out a pattern, you know, she has a, t she actually has a whole team of people from what I understand. Um, and dang, I would too. <laughs> Fight a million. Says she will be doing some, doing more experience. To try. I love that. I love that because I was mentally, oh, okay, direct from her video. Oh, so she she puts up the video first and then they write the pattern. I did not know that, but still, it is her creativity. It is her intellectual property. These tutorials that she puts out and the patterns, those are all her, even if she's not the one with the pen in her hand. Absolutely, they are her designs. Her pattern writer, so maybe there's just one. I, you know, and like I said, you know, I don't follow Crystal, and I'm gonna say that is because these are level one and two patterns. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's a lot of people who love that wheelhouse, and that's where they want to be in their crochet. Hello, Doris. Good morning. <laughs> um, and, but it's just, it wasn't where my, I felt like my creative itch was being scratched. So I went on and started learning from other designers. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that's, if that's your wheelhouse, if that's where you enjoy crochet the most and you don't enjoy going on to more um, complicated designs um, there is nothing wrong with that and I'm not saying more complicated is better don't ever don't ever put those words in my mouth because that many times that's how it works I don't know how many there are She does have some shawls, multiple rows. Okay, see, and I, I love this, you know, that she's doing this one. And I am interested in, you know, adding her crochet along to my playlist and listening to it while I'm going down the road. Where normally I don't play her tutorials. Um, what helps keep me sane when I'm listening to tutorials going down the road, the more complicated and the more you know, row repeats and stitch repeats, the better because I can picture that in my mind and it keeps me sane, staring out a windshield <laughs> all day. And it helps me feel like I'm still in the crochet community because I got crochet and at least going on in my head, if not in my hands. Crystal is wonderful. And I respect her. I respect her accomplishments. I respect her as a person, as you know, a parent and a spouse, and you know, all about her. I have a lot of respect for Crystal. A lot of love for Crystal. What does I said something that made sense? What? What's wrong with me? What did <laughs> I've blinked since then? <laughs> For me, I just don't think intricate. Appreciate for prayer shawls. Appropriate for prayer shawls. It's not about showing off. Okay. If I see, and I'm in a different space as that, and I respect, I respect where you're coming from on that. If 
I want to, I will put my heart and soul into something if it is for someone else. Whether you're calling it a prayer shawl, I don't have any belief that there's any spiritual powers connected with fibers. I have a different belief than that. I believe in the power of prayer, absolutely. And, um, you know, praying for whoever gets that shawl, you know, that's out of our hands, that's great. I do not personally believe there are, there's a spiritual attachment to the yarn itself. As much as I love crochet, and you guys can throw rocks at me all day long, um, I respect you, you know, if you disagree, that's fine. We don't have to argue. I love you for you being an individual. Uh, super basic. Yeah, and so when I finally get around to doing those shawl in a balls to give to people at church, um, I'm just going to do the sunset wrap, which I believe this is a Selena Baca pattern. You looked at that sunset wrap, didn't you, Robin? Um, it seems like it was a lemon peel stitch. I believe it was a lemon peel stitch. And, of course, she calls it a... When she did something else in the lemon peel, she called it a woven. And where um, Daisy Farm Crafts, she has another name for it. I think someone who has a love for crochet would love an intricate design prayer shawl. I believe that too, Robin. I believe that too. And to me, it's about the effort and the love put into making this a beautiful thing. And there's nothing unbeautiful about a basic design. Like I was just saying, the, that, um, that sunset wrap, I believe, is just a rectangle done in a lemon peel. Okay, I agree. Exactly, Marion. I do believe. So, your kind of ministry, this is, I'm, I'm trying to um, kind of summarize this. Your ministry is to give a gift of your love, your art, to someone and to be, you have a prayer going on right there in your chair. Wrap shawl. Um, I'm pretty sure that sunset wrap was just a, it's just a lemon peel. It's just single, double, single, double. And I think she did hers in one, one shawl in a ball. I was thinking about doing it in two and making it a little longer. And I want to do five of them and put a little tag on them that says, I'm not lost, I'm yours if you found me and give it to you. we have us um we have two services going on at once in our building it's not a huge building or anything but in the basement in the in the lower level is the spanish service it was too short okay i um yeah and and so i have five different colors two balls each so um I want to do those it, with two balls. I, I want to make it longer. And, you know, I just want to make it a bigger wrap. I'm pretty sure, looking at the picture of her um, sunset wrap, that she, she may or may not have color controlled that. I don't know. I think I'm going to cake mine up. Here's an idea. I'm going to cake mine up and do an outside pull. I'm going to start with a darker color and work my way up and do it vertically. Yeah. I, you know, and everybody's in their different, you know, nobody's right or wrong about that you know about how intricate your prayer shawl is that is where your heart is so that is what is right for you um and i don't have any problem with that like i was saying you know that doing a lemon peel rectangular wrap that i'm going to do with the shawl and the balls um 
yeah that's a pretty basic that's a pretty basic stitch and it'll be beautiful done in that yarn um, if I decided to do a certain kind of shawl let's say let's say I did this um, level 3 shawl that um, crystal is doing you know, I would definitely, that would definitely, and you know, be a prayer ministry for me, a personal prayer ministry where if I plan on giving that to somebody, you know, or donating it, whatever, that um, I think that would be just as valuable. Just because someone doesn't understand crochet, in my mind, um, they do understand beauty and art people understand beauty and art if that's what they're into and if they're really into fiber art you know looking at um fabrics maybe they maybe they're into sewing or quilting i need a shawl pattern well somebody here could probably help you that doesn't end with a point in the back well the sunset wrap um and Robin is going to do a crochet along with a rectangular um, wrap slash shawl. I, I'll, I call those wraps. Um, that starts, what, the first Sunday in May, Robin? And that's the crochet version. At the same time, Cheryl's going to be doing a knitted version. Crochet along, or knit along. So that's coming up. And it's something that um, I really want to do, but I probably won't do it till the fall. Yeah, not long in the back. Yes. Yeah, her crochet along, yeah. The knit is triangle. Okay, so the knit has a point, but the crochet, the crocheted one is not. Oh boy, I'm gonna be ready for Lodi. Woo wee. We are 22 miles away from Lodi. So. It's her own design, Ellen. Or you could just do a lemon peel rectangle. <laughs> Whatever length and width you want. Yeah, it's her own design, you guys. Robin is designing her own shawl, wrap, whatever. S little snuggler. I think she's still working on it. I'm not positive. Robin's going to correct me. Yeah, I don't... Um Hi, HD. Hello, hello. Yeah, more details in about two weeks. She is working on it, Ellen. Um, I have a completely different belief about praying over inanimate objects. People, living things, yes. But um, in my studies that I've come across, you know, I have a different belief about that. And just because somebody says something on the internet doesn't make it true, but doesn't make it false either. Just, I just know that I go directly to the source and that is not, um, I don't follow that belief.
this guy ahead of me, he was pushing me from behind when I was doing 60. Now he's doing 50. Oh, he's taking that. Quit complaining, Dana. He was slowing down for the exit. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's doing his job. Okay. So we're 20 miles from Lodi, and that's where I'll... And I hope I'm not offending you, Dawn. Um, we may have very different beliefs about that. And that's okay. It's okay for us to disagree. Yeah, and that's all according to his will. Okay, okay. I, and I don't want to offend anybody when it comes to religious beliefs. Yeah, and see, Robin, I disagree with that. But <clears throat> there are a lot of people who disagree with me, so... the risk of upsetting anybody there are religious organizations in this world yeah and um, speaking about that one specifically that have taken on an authority that they don't have that's my belief so Speaking of religious subjects, if we're going to get on this top topic. Yeah, yeah, I would be curious too, Don. Nothing wrong with that. Um, in fact, I think I have looked up prayer shawl in the past because I, I thought, well, that sounds interesting. Is that something where I just, you know, am in like a state? Of, oh, you know what? This kind of goes along with the Noah scarf. Um, cause that's what I was going to bring up the next Bible study pattern, but going back to the Noah scarf and talking about prayer shawls. Okay. The Noah scarf is not only, you know, a really good way to learn the first 11 chapters of the Bible. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. So does the Episcopalian church. My mom goes to, um, so here's the thing. The thing about the Noah scarf, and I was thinking about this for the prayer shawl. Um, the Noah scarf, the pattern, the pattern itself is not all that great. It's no big deal. It's simple. It's, uh, you know, and the border is awful. I'll be the first one to say the border of the Noah scarf is awful, but it was easy. And it worked out with the... Um, the thing is about the Noah scarf is not only does, you know, are you reading the first 11 chapters of the Bible three times, or at least the first nine three times, um, but also it helps us with our cognitive functions, supposedly, according to, you know, what I've read, what I've researched. Um, I am not an expert, but apparently getting your eyes off of a screen of any kind, like I am inundated with um, screens right now. I've got the phone, I've got the GPS, I've got the tablet, my ELD tablet. I am inunda inundated with LED lights, um, you know, all kinds of things that are horrible that have been shown to cause all kinds of conditions in our mind and body. I mean, even to the point of MS or, you know, those kinds of diseases or dementia or, you know, just basic loss of mental function, like being being able to remember, did I take my Tylenol 20 minutes ago or did, or did I not? Those kinds of things. And the, the Noah scarf, process is is an exercise in trying to get that back and it's a mental exercise that you know you've got stitches in multiples of three and you concentrate on that and then and then and then the next time through you know like you do your three stitches one two three and you say them out loud you do that the first for the part one of the pattern and then part two you have three memory phrases like life death sin I'm just making this up 
and you say that as you do those three stitches out loud and then the third time through you mentally are, should be hopefully will be able to work that pattern while thinking on a different while thinking on a thought prompt from the chapter that you just read so I can see where um, a shawl pattern where your mind you know if you do something that isn't too complicated while you're doing this creative process with your hands you've got the muscle memory going for that pattern in your mind you are in prayer and that is an excellent spiritual mental and emotional exercise for you and um of course prayer um is powerful for anyone that you know that you pray for that's powerful so i could see myself doing a quote unquote prayer shawl for maybe this next um this next um part of genesis which is going to be like starting with chapter 12 i think it goes through 23 or 24 it's the story of Abraham so I might do, that helps me a lot see I love talking to you guys like I don't believe in blessing an inanimate object okay but I do believe in the spiritual and mental benefits of doing a prayer shawl while you know like crocheting something that is totally a matter of giving you're doing it to bless someone else and your mind is in prayer during the whole time so i i can get behind that absolutely and that is an idea for what i might do with my next project will be named at which will be learning about abraham and sarah and Isaac and Ishmael <laughs> yeah so that thank you guys you know I just I might go that direction of course I am learning that when I get an idea I need to sleep on it pray on it sleep on it go do something else most of the times I call up Robin and go, guess what, guess what, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to have this worldwide thing. <laughs> Which I do still want to do. I want to develop a crochet competition that is similar to like the knitting sock madness. I, but that's going to take a team of us. I can't see. I can't see. I think it's whatever you make of it. Seriously. I, I think just because some pastor somewhere laid his hands on a shawl and said this is how it works. No. Uh, he's making things up because that doesn't come from scripture. But um, I think if you can come up with a way that you know is legitimate, like just praying while you're crocheting for whoever gets this item or praying as you are releasing it to the donation, um, um, has anybody else lost the sound or just Robin? I don't know. Maybe everybody else just lost the sound. Is it just Robin or is it everybody else? They're also idle. And scripture um, teaches against that. No, silly. Oh, <laughs> with your ideas, eyes. 
<laughs> I see what you're saying. You're going through a tunnel. I do still want to get together with a team. Um, with a team to do something like the Sock Madness. But I need to get um, more familiar with how that works. I need to follow Sock Madness. I need to sit down and study how that competition works, that knitting, that worldwide knitting competition that goes on every year over on Ravelry. And check out some of the other knitting competitions and um, come up with a crochet competition so I want to do that. I want to do, I want to copy them. I want to do what they do. Exactly, I need Karen. But Karen, Karen doesn't need me. That's the thing. <laughs> well, except Marianne, and I'm sorry. These are your beliefs, and it's your comfort. My belief and my, my understanding from reading scripture is that we're not supposed to do that. We are not supposed to make statues. And like when I look at a statue, like they were taught, like I was watching something on the statue of Rocky, okay? That, we're, we're told not to do that. So anyway, that's my understanding of scripture. Yours may be different. And my understanding of scripture, as it says in scripture, God is not a God of confusion. We do not need anybody to interpret it for us. He made sure that it was available to all of us to understand. And that's part of the, that is like the huge core of what the Noah scarf was all about. The pattern itself is, it's, Let's be honest. It's crap. <laughs> it is crap. But, but the rest of the process of understanding those first 11 chapters. And Marion, I hope, I pray that you will do the Noah Scarf when it comes public. It is so, I am getting so much great feedback on, you know, the memorization part and how, like, Joyce finished hers. I was talking about how well... I, I'll have to reread what she says because I'm not quoting her, but that it did it it did help she did see improvement in mental functions and also in knowledge of the first eleven chapters, which is considered the Bible part one by many. I would love for you to try it, Marianne. That would just that would just tickle me to death. Okay. Uh, I respect that. I am so excited about it. And now I'm excited about, you know, I've been rereading um, Abraham. That's been my study lately, but I haven't dove deep into it yet. Like I did the first 11 chapters, but like 12 through 24 or 12 through 23, whatever it is with Abraham, I haven't done a deep dive. I've just been reading a chapter in the morning to get more familiar with the flow, but then I'm going to be doing some um, deep dives into those studies. And, you know, the original Hebrew and Greek, you know, the Septuagint, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Does anybody know how to pronounce it? Septuagint, where they took the Hebrew Bible and translated it to Greek back. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. It was, it, and the focus, it is not just spiritual, it's also mental. And it, um, that was part of my, you know, goal was to make part of it mentally healthy, not just because you're reading the good word, but because help repair some of the damage done by blue light toxicity and also get people to get out of you know any other book other than scripture
Uh, I can't see what you said, Doris. I can't see what you said. It looks like, it looks like the, to me from here, it looks like the cat walked across your keyboard. What did she say? <laughs> so, oh, she's trying to pronounce septunja. It's, it, I, sex tub. Uh, I have to see the, I, you know, if I had the word in front of me, I could pronounce it. But for some reason, I can't visually bring that word up in front of me. Too much blue light toxicity in my brain. Too much time looking at screens. I'm finding the quiet time. The, ch the challenge, yes. Yes, because we don't do that anymore. Oh, thank you, Ellen. Thank you. I'm I'm glad that that is, um, you know, that people are enjoying that. And part one is just, you know, reading a chapter and then counting your stitches in threes out loud. Part two is a memory phrase. Like, uh, I think I did Noah, Seth, Enoch. Yeah, I think that was it. one of the, you know, one of the chapters, the memory phrase was Noah, Seth, Enoch. So after you read the chapter, you would crochet in your, let's say your three double crochets, you'd say Noah, Seth, Enoch. And then you'd go on to your troubles, Noah, Seth, Enoch. And um, it's a great way to understand, you know, to get, and, and here's the thing, my little, you know, experiment with the Noah scarf it is not a deep dive into those 11 chapters there is so much more more even than I learned but I went down a deep deep rabbit hole um, you know chasing at all that what it is so rich with so much more teaching than even that you know I just barely skimmed the surface with the Noah scarf <laughs> that was really a you know a high level look at those 11 chapters but it was a great it's a great starting place and the thing I love about the first 11 chapters is that everything is there everything including Jesus Jesus is there The cycle of mankind, how we we live in peace with God, then we start giving into temptation and sin, we suffer the consequences, and then we come back to living in peace with God. It's it's like the the human cycle. And he knew this about us. He knew this was going to happen before he created us. And he gave us the choice and a path, a plan to come back to him every time. Oh, thank you, Ellen. I was worried about that too. I wasn't gonna go banging baptism over everybody's heads. wasn't going to go do that. We all have different beliefs and that's why I love all of you all. We have different lenses that we look at the world through. And to me, that's part of our creativity. We all have a different creative lens too. We have a different spiritual lens. We have a different moral lens. Okay, you guys. I hope I haven't hurt anybody. It is not my intention. I couldn't read all of that. I'll have to read it once I get parked. Because I'm getting ready to take my exit and say goodbye to you guys for this morning. I love all of you just the way you are. And it is okay if we don't agree 
like socially, at the citizen level, at the social level, we need to stop this whole persecution of people who have a different belief. Stop canceling them out of our lives because we have a different belief. Now, how, how someone treats others, that's differently, but we can treat each other with love, whether we agree or not. Take exit 485 on the right to California 12, then take the first right. Yeah, I we have different beliefs, and that's why I felt comfortable stating, okay, I have a different belief from you, um, because we are so loving and forgiving. Just play with yarn. Absolutely. I don't want to hurt anyone. And, and that's why, you know, Marion, I hope I haven't hurt you by stating that I have a different belief, that I haven't read that, that I, I don't see that. My, my baseline is following scripture itself. So my baseline Turn might right make me disagree with you about things, but it doesn't change how I feel about you. I don't think you're stupid or anything like that. I think you're an intelligent woman and we have different beliefs. Robin and I have different beliefs on all kinds of things. Turn left on North <clears throat> but you know what? I hang out with her anyway, even though she cramps my style. <laughs> okay you guys I am going to stop the live get fuel and get back out on the road okay okay I love you guys and I mean that when I say that yeah I don't know the difference <laughs> I know the difference we see things differently. Okay, Marion, I love you. All right, and I love all of you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.